Wendell Potter is a senior analyst with the Center for Public Integrity. He's the author of Deadly Spin. He is the former vice president of corporate communications for Cigna, the giant health insurance uh, megalopoly. Uh, and he had, and then he turned whistleblower. His website is wendellpotter.com. And uh, Wendell, welcome back to the program. Tom, thanks for having me back on. And 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 happy New Year to you. I haven't talked to you since the beginning of the year. I hope this is a great year for you. And same to you and Louise. Thank, thank you. Thank you. So uh, you just heard, you know, where uh, you know we. It took us probably more like a half hour to get, to wander around to the point where we realized that we really just didn't know what we did, what we needed to know. We didn't know what we didn't know much less what we, you know, we, we did know what we didn't know, and we also were pretty sure that we didn't know what we didn't know. So can you fill us in? Yeah, uh, it, this is interesting. What Wendy's is doing is uh, uh, not the first time that we've heard from some of these big chains that they're going to be trying to circumvent the uh, reform law, uh, Obamacare. And I might say that I think this might be an opportunity for uh, people who are supportive of health care reform to... Uh, uh, express a point of view to the leadership of Wendy's. This is just not acceptable. This is, an, in my view, just an, uh, an example of what a company will try to do to uh, uh, try to get away with something that, that they would probably have done anyway. We need to know, first of all, how many full-time employees these, this, uh, this, this franchisor had. Uh, did they have insurance already? Uh, and... Uh, uh, so there's a lot we don't know. But but and, but you know, you know, to put this in a larger frame, I mean, there, Mitt Romney pays 14 percent. You know, when he when he decides to not call all of his religious deductions, I mean, pays typically eight or nine percent in taxes. It's not because he's an evil person, although you could make that argument. Um, it's because the law allows it. So uh, you would expect any corporation or wealthy person who is uh, covetous of their wealth to do whatever is legally possible to maximize their wealth, maximize their shareholder value. Um, you know, I, I don't disagree that, that p if people are going to patronize Wendy's, they should certainly, uh, uh, you know, let the, let the Wendy's franchisor know their opinion or let the Wendy's headquarters know. But, but the company's rebuttal would be, you know, we're doing what the law allows. Shouldn't we be looking at the law? I think we should be looking at the law, and there very well could be some things that need to be changed about the law. Uh, there could be some consequences that need, and undoubtedly there will be, that need to be addressed in the future. Whether this is one of them will remain to be seen. Yeah. So, I'd like, so point, I'd like to point out something, though. This is not the first time that uh, uh, the service sector has been reducing hours. My wife works in retail and uh, for one of the big companies, and she's told, told me that they're just not, they haven't been for a long time hiring people full time. Sure. This is this is not something that's new. It uh, may be pinned on Obamacare, but it's certainly not something that's new. No, it goes back in big in a big way to the Reagan administration when the fundamental con compact, the social compact, uh, and, and not so much a legal one, but the social compact between employers and employees fundamentally changed when America became more libertarian and less less liberal, as it were, um, and it has picked up speed since the '80s, but. But um, is it true that if a company reduces all of their employees to 32 hours, that that company no longer has to pay for their health insurance? And if so, who does and how? Well, it depends on how many employees the franchisor has. If it's uh, 50 or fewer employees, uh, fewer than 50 employees, they're exempted. There are not that many employees, actually, that are subject to the mandate that don't already offer coverage. Mm -hmm. um, but here's something else. If, 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 uh, a, a so you have, to have, you have to have more than 50 employees for this even to be an issue? That's exactly right. Okay, so, pardon uh, my interrupting. Uh, we don't know how many uh, employees this franchisor has, uh, okay. so that's, that's one factor. Uh, the other is uh, uh, it may not be necessarily a bad thing. What we have been seeing for the past several years is an unraveling of our employer-based system. Mm -hmm. And I'd say good riddance when it's all unraveled and we have a system in which people are not depending on their employment for their coverage. Now, right. if, uh, if these employees find that they're not being uh, full-time, if they're not eligible for coverage, uh, they can get coverage through the exchange that we set up at the uh, beginning. Right, of so they get year, coverage through the exchange, and that coverage is paid for by the federal and state government. But doesn't that come out of Medicaid funding? Uh, Medicaid will be expanded to uh, include 
people who are earning up to 400% of the federal poverty level. Okay, so what happens in states like Florida, where Governor Rick Scott has said, I'm not going to take the Medicaid money? I think, I think frankly, that the governor will change his mind. I think that, that what we're seeing right now is just, uh, in my view, bluffing. The, Political posturing. Uh, I, I think so. I think that uh, these governors will be uh, uh, having some conversations, some serious conversations with some of the hospitals in their states who will tell the governor and, and others that, look, you need to take this money right. because uh, if you don't, we will probably have to go out of business. Uh, the what, when is when is the switch is flipped today. on this? Say it again? When is the switch flipped on this? At what point does this become come into effect? It'll come into effect on January the 1st, 2014. Uh, on October the 1st of this year uh, will be the first open enrollment period for the exchanges. Uh, mm. But uh, January the 1st of 2014 is when the, the, uh, the switch will be flipped and uh, we will have a new world in health care, which exchanges will be going live, and the Medicaid program will be expanded in most states, and I frankly think in every state. Now, in so... so uh... So basically, your response to my concern that somebody living in a state that's not taking Medicaid money might not be able to, you know, they might get the insurance, but there's no money to fund it, you know, which is kind of useless insurance, that that's well, not going to be the case because the governors are not going to be able to withstand the political pressure. But that's what one thing, but, but on the other hand, the exchanges are not dependent upon on Medicaid. I mean, uh, right. some of the people who will be newly insured will be uh, eligible for the first time for Medicaid. Those who are not uh, will be able to buy coverage uh, through the exchanges, okay. and uh, depending on their income, will be able to get subsidies. Uh, okay, I get it. We, we have a little less than a minute left here, here Wendell. Um, so uh, the, somebody who, are, are, you know, you, again, we have these states that are not setting up exchanges. Does that mean that we're just going to end up with a largely federalized system as a consequence of Republican states refusing to play? I think it could indeed work out that way. That uh, in at least half the states, uh, the, the federal government will be operating the exchanges at least initially, uh, and uh, the states will be able to control that mechanism. And I think that's that's pretty short-sighted on the part of the uh, Republican governors who've always said that uh, the states should be in charge of the health care. So uh, it's very interesting. So your your take on this is that this actually may be a good thing at the end of the day, not over the short term. Certainly not a good moral thing for Wendy's and other companies to say, no, we're going to cut our employees back. It's bad for, you know, labor in general. But in terms of the health care system over time, there is a mechanism that will balance it out. I think so. I think it's a good thing. This is, the law will be disrupted. There's no way. And there, it needs to be disrupted. There are a lot of things about our health care system. Hang on. Finance. Hang on. This is the Tom Hartman Program. Yes, I, I totally agree. Wendell Potter, um, wendellpotter.com, the website. Sir, thank you so Wendell, thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure, Tom. Thank you. I wish you the best for the year.